Parque Warner is one of Spain's signature amusement parks, and one of two, Parques Reunidos operates in the city of Madrid. The park is home to seven roller coasters, which isn't a ton, but I personally believe that this is one of the most well-rounded and underrated coaster collections you'll find anywhere in Europe. I had the chance to visit this park back in July and had a truly unforgettable time. Hands down, my favorite theme park day in Spain, and in this video, I want to go over some of the reasons why. By that, I of course mean ranking Parque Warner Madrid's seven roller coasters from worst to best. After all, that is quite literally the video title. So let's waste no time and get things started because there's certainly quite a bit to unpack here. This is every roller coaster ranked at Parque Warner Madrid. Number 7, Tom and Jerry, opened in 2002. Manufactured by Zero, Tivoli coasters are some of the most popular kids coaster models on the market. All throughout Europe and the world, you can find this exact layout making it feel stale to a roller coaster enthusiast like myself. But is this ride experience at least solid? Well, kind of. The trains are extremely long, so sitting on any end of the train provides a wildly different sensation. Tivoli coasters are generally smooth but feature uncomfortable trains and restraints. And the size of the ride is actually decent for a kid's coaster. It's not a bad experience, but I think there's definitely room for improvement in my opinion. I think the young ones will enjoy it and it'll be a way for them to work their way up to bigger rides. Number 6, Coaster Express, opened in 2002. Normally in these lists, we go from the smallest coasters to mid-sized coasters to large coasters. But at Parque Warner Madrid, we are jumping the gun with the worst large coaster and perhaps the objectively worst coaster here, period, and that's Coaster Express. This is an enormous wooden roller coaster manufactured by the Roller Coaster Corporation of America. If you're familiar with this company, they have a reputation for having built some terribly rough and uncomfortable rides. I had heard horror stories about Coaster Express and how badly it beats you up, but my experience with this ride was quite interesting. Since Parquet Warner had retracked this coaster recently, it wasn't anywhere near as rough as I expected. But because I wasn't focused on that, I was exposed to the other glaring issue with this ride, and that's the layout. Coaster Express has one of the weakest and most blatantly boring layouts I've ever experienced on a wooden coaster, and there are no forces to be found anywhere. Ironically, even though I found this ride to be somewhat smooth and comparison to my expectations, it still ended up being one of my least favorite roller coasters I had ever ridden in Europe. Number 5, Cora Camino's Bip Bip, opened in 2009. On paper, it might seem strange that I put this 50-foot family coaster over a massive wooden coaster, but that can be accredited to the fact that Cora Camino's Bip Bip is the gold standard for a family ride. Manufactured by Mock Rides, this is an ultra-rare young star coaster, one of only six in the world. And of the bunch I've ridden, this is the most fast-paced with the most forces. Yes, this ride actually does have moments of legitimate airtime. If you're sitting in the back, you are whipped through so many different elements, and the already good pacing is accentuated. I can't say I have any real complaints for this ride. I thought it was a lot of fun. But as someone who is looking for a more intense experience, four roller coasters in the park rank higher for me. Number four, Shadows of Arkham, opened in 2002. Something a lot of people don't recognize about Parque Warner Madrid is at one point in time, they were actually owned and operated by Six Flags. And what do you know? Here, you'll find the only Batman the Ride clone in all of Europe. I know people like to give this model flack for being so common in North America, but on this continent, it's entirely unique. Not to mention, the ride experience is awesome and totally makes up for it anyways. Shadows of Arkham is only 2,700 feet in length, but what it packs in is exceptional. Five inversions, including two vertical loops, two corkscrews, and a zero-g roll. And I kid you not, all of these were executed to perfection. They're all taken with just the right amount of speed, which is especially true on this Batman clone since Shadows of Arkham was running stupid fast the day I visited Park Warner. It's a great old-school B&M, but in the number three spot, we've got an even finer example. Number three, Superman La Attraction de Acero, opened in 2002. This is hands down one of my favorite floorless coasters built by BNM. At 161 feet tall, it's enormous too, certainly one of the largest. When I first saw this ride online, I thought the elements looked too drawn out to compete with other floorless coasters. However, there was more whip than I expected, and the valleys are packed full of positive Gs in a similar way to Banshee at King's Island, which also strays away from the typical BNM invert by focusing on drawn out elements. There's even a few Camelback Hills that provide some legitimate sustained airtime for a change. If I did have one critique for Superman though, it's that this is one of the shakier B&M coasters I've ridden. Not rough in a Vacoma SLC kind of way, but vibrating like some other B&M floorless and hyper coasters. In my opinion, it's not terribly bad to the point where it'll detract from the ride experience, and as a matter of fact, this may result in some additional intensity, but it does mean you'll probably have to sit out every few rides and collect yourself. But even more so than Superman, I think this applies for Stuntfall, open in 2002. Old Vacoma is known for their incredibly rough rides with uninspired layouts, but this couldn't be furthest from the truth when it comes to their giant inverted boomerang model. Currently, there are only four of these located around the world, one in America, one in Spain, one in Russia, and one in China. I got to know this model when I rode it as Aftershock at Silverwood in Idaho, but ironically, Northern Idaho may be harder to get to for an American than Madrid, Spain. In that case, Stuntfall may be the most accessible giant inverted boomerang out there, and I think every roller coaster enthusiast needs to try to experience one of these at some point. It's incredibly intense due to the speed at which you take each of the ride's inversions, and disorienting because you experience them both forwards and backwards. Not to mention, Stuntfall's dual pair of 177 foot 
foot vertical spikes are absolutely terrifying. For years, it was a close call between Superman and Stuntfall, for which was the number one roller coaster at the park. But in 2023, Parque Warner Madrid made headlines when they opened their first new roller coaster in 14 years and first large scale roller coaster in more than two decades. Number one, Batman Gotham City Escape, opened in 2023. When it's been so long since a park has opened a brand new major roller coaster, you've got to go all in and make a serious investment. And at more than 20 million euros, Gotham City Escape is just that, combining an epic coaster layout with a compelling storyline, theming, and appearance. I was completely blown away by this ride because I felt that it was one of the few roller coasters in the world to encapsulate every aspect of what makes a world-class ride experience. It's split up into three sections, each with a powerful LSM launch, a beautiful top hat with a drop unlike anything else in the park, several moments of airtime all distinctly different from one another, and four inversions, two of which hang you upside down for multiple seconds at a time. I already mentioned the ride storyline and theming, but Parque Warner really went the extra mile by making this a full package experience. One of the most underrated ways they did this was the addition of onboard audio to progress the ride. That is something you see on very few roller coasters, and I think this is one of my favorite examples out there. Batman Gotham City Escape is now the greatest roller coaster ever to be added to Spain and one of the best in the entirety of Europe. In the future, I hope we continue to see Parque Warner invest in similarly high quality ride experiences, like for example, giving Coaster Express the RMC treatment and giving Spain their first hybrid coaster. I can say with full confidence that I'd be quick to return to the park if that were the case. But overall, this is a really nice park and I think it's got one of the more underrated coaster lineups anywhere in Europe. With that being said, let me know in the comments what you think of Parque Warner Madrid. If you've been before, let me know how you'd rank these coasters up, and if you haven't, which of these rides seem the most interesting to you. Also, do me a favor by giving this video a like and subscribing to Coaster Dash so you don't miss any future content. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye, guys.